I just got fed up with it. People wanting to buy small deals, which there's absolutely nothing wrong with. But at the same time, they have lofty expectations and unrealistic goals. Now, if you don't know what size business to buy, then you were just absolutely lost from the get-go, which is why I created this podcast episode. So you can understand the journey of what it takes to build wealth with online businesses. If you want to own a portfolio of online businesses, this podcast is absolutely for you. Hi. I'm Jared Krauss. I'm the host of the Buying Online Businesses podcast. And today I'm speaking with myself and with you and having a solo podcast episode. Yes, me, myself, and I are talking to you about what it looks like to dip your toes in the water when starting off trying to buy online businesses. I also give you examples of what it looks like buying websites or buying online businesses. Uh, whether they're e-com, content, SaaS, membership. And I specifically talk about the mindset needed to buy these businesses and very importantly, what you should expect when buying small deals versus larger deals. So I'll give you examples of what it looks like between buying a $5,000 site, a $50,000 site, and a $20,000 business and a $200,000 business. And I give some scenarios if it were to be a linear path as an online entrepreneur of owning these businesses, what it could look like in terms of years from going from a uh, $20,000 business to building a, to getting to that point of building a million dollar portfolio of online businesses from, from that point. And then also stacked up against starting with a 200 K business going to build a portfolio to a million dollar business and the difference in timeframes and the difference in, the experience of the journey as well and how you can do it with different levels of stress and input and work. Now, there's so much value in this podcast. I'm sure you're going to enjoy it, but I'm very specifically talking about buying businesses. And if you haven't got my due diligence framework that I've used and a lot of my clients have used, go away and get that at buyingonlinebusinesses.com forward slash free resources. It is a framework that you can get for free and it has helped people save a lot of money and make a lot of money. So go away and get that. Let's dive into the episode. What's up? This is Jared and I am stoked to have you here. Before we dive into the show, I want to remind you that for a limited time, you can get one-to-one voice note mentoring with me to help you buy and grow your online business. I'm opening up just a few slots of voice note coaching to give you one-to-one access to me via Coachbox. You'll tell me your goals and challenges and we'll work through them together. I'll ask questions, I'll tell you what I think, and we'll get you ticking boxes and achieving your online income goals. You can message me anytime and I'll respond within 48 hours. Right now, you can get 20% off by using the coupon code JARYD, that's J-A-R-Y-D, and I'll drop the link in the show notes so you can find out more. Until then, let's get on with the episode. Hey, welcome. This pod's going to be a little bit different than what you're you're normally listening to. Normally, you're listening to me having a conversation with somebody else uh, about a, about a certain subject. And this, I'm going to have a conversation with just you, just the listener. So it's just going to be me, myself, and I talking to you about what size business should you buy for your first acquisition and moving forwards up into larger acquisitions. And and I just want to highlight what the process could look like for you for those different types of businesses or the different size of businesses you get into and where you start out at. Specifically, I'm bringing this up to for, for myself and for you guys. What I want to do is I just want to get this off my chest. I just need to let it out there uh, because I my goal is to help you guys have a better lifestyle and earn money whilst working less. And to do that, sometimes people come to the party and want to start at a different level and they might be making life a lot harder for themselves. So I want to try and help you set yourself up for success. And I do know that everybody is at a different position. So we should not be comparing ourselves to others financially and where we start. You need to start where you can start. Uh, But if you can afford to start at a different range, then it can allow you to actually get to your goals faster and have a more enjoyable experience remember that it's really really important where you start 
determines how enjoyable your experience will be and also how fast you can get to your goals. So a lot of people come to me and say, Jared, I want to uh, get started in buying online businesses. I want to start with a couple of thousand dollars. Cool. Now, I've had other podcasts and I recommend people to not start under the $10,000 price range and I'll go through and share with you some examples and, and, and stuff why, but the proof of concept is not the same and your experience is not going to be the same as buying a larger business when you're buying a smaller business. You just cannot compare the two. They are not the same. When you buy a smaller business, it's very different to buying a business that's 10 times the size of it. So let me give you an example and I'll give you two examples. And when I give you these examples, please note that I'm being very generalized because there's nuances to businesses and there's different niches behave differently in just different content sites. And we're going to be specifically talking about this will be about content sites, but it can be used for e-com biz, businesses, SaaS businesses, and also uh, membership businesses. So all of the business models, this can be used, but I'm being very generalized in what I'm saying here. This is not uh, per specific deal. Very generalized advice on these examples. But if you were to buy a $5,000 site compared to a $50,000 site, when you buy a $5,000 site, and you stack it against to a $50,000 site, that's a $5,000 site is 10 times smaller, generally. 10 times more risk, 10 times more work, and can take you 10 times as long to get to that $50,000 valuation because you need to put so much more effort and work into it. And what I have found is that people have started out on the smallest scale and I've warned them and said, hey, this is how it's gonna be. And they say, I just wanna start off with a $5,000 site or a $3,000 site and then I'll work my way up to something bigger. Cool, they do that, they realize it can take a year, two, maybe even longer to get that $5,000 site even moving and even gain some traffic and a little bit of income and they realize, ah, oh, this is not gonna work for me which is an absolute massive shame. Because then I see people buy a $50,000 site that's 10 times the size of a $5,000 site, 10 times less risk, 10 times less work, 10 times easier to run. They buy it and they have a far more enjoyable experience doing so because they have resources and they've, they're working on an asset that has a lot more meat on the bone rather than trying to manufacture income and manufacture traffic on something that is a baby site. Now, I know people that charge $50,000 for a website design in itself. And then also you can buy domains for 2,000 or 1,000 to $5,000. And they are not even getting any traffic. I'm not talking about expired domains here. I'm talking about brand new domains. You can buy domains around that price range and they're not even generating traffic. You can buy domains that are, you know, do have links and traffic going to them at that price range. But then you still have to have build a site and you still have to gain momentum. Now, let's give you an example of a $20,000 site to a $200,000 site. It's the same thing. A $20,000 site is 10 times smaller compared, so a $20,000 site compared to a $200,000 site is 10 times smaller, 10 times more risk, 10 times more work. And I would go as far as being very general in saying that buying a $200,000 site would be 10 times more enjoyable than buying a $20,000 site. And the same difference between a $5,000 site and a $50,000 site, I would go as far as to say buying a $50,000 site would be 10 times more enjoyable than buying a $5,000 site. Now, this is getting thrown out there by me, not to make you guys put yourself in financial hardship and stretch yourself too thin. This is for me to share with you that you can go away and start at a smaller scale but you're looking at a different time frame of you achieving your goals 
compared to people that are buying those sites from 50 to 200K or more. And you can't compare yourself to those. Typically when you're buying a smaller site, like I've said before, is you're gonna have to do a lot of work, tireless work without much ROI for a minimum of a year, maybe two years, maybe even a little bit longer for you to start to see results. Unless you invest decent amount of money and time into SEO content and links for a smaller content site or if it's an e-commerce business and all that sort of stuff then you've got a lot more other things that you need to be investing your time and money into as well uh, especially into paid ads now why is a twenty thousand dollar site ten times less enjoyable than buying a two hundred thousand dollar site now Let's give you an example here. When you buy a $20,000 site, let's just say we're going off a 35 multiple, okay? So if you go $20,000 divided by 35, you got $571. Now, that $571, you can go away and buy a bit of content with it. But most people in this bracket, in this, are gonna have the mindset of, oh, I wanna get the cheapest content that I possibly can and put on the site which I don't think is the best move. And with $570 in income per month, most people at $20,000 price range are gonna to wanna to gain their ROI back and put it in their pocket rather than spend it all on content or more than what they're already getting from their return per month on content. If you were to spend that money on content, say you've got $570, $550 per month, you could go away and probably get five really good articles but you're going to want to grow quicker so you don't have especially for a smaller site you're going to want to grow quicker and start to take market share of that traffic in your particular niche and you're also going to want to build build backlinks and you will have to do a lot more of the work yourself if you want to save money and not reinvest too much into it and to get that twenty thousand dollar site to a higher value you're going to have to do a lot more work yourself now if you buy something that is two hundred thousand dollars, right, and you divide that by the multiple monthly multiple of say thirty five again, you got about five thousand seven hundred seven hundred dollars a month. Let's just say fifty five hundred dollars a month. What I find when I work with people that buy sites two hundred k or more, uh, typically they go away and they get an SEO agency to create content, build links, and do SEO work. And they might spend two to three or two to four thousand dollars a month on that, and they might keep for themselves two to thousand, one thousand, fifteen hundred dollars a month to put in their back pocket and gain some ROI. But by them reinvesting to the site, what they have is resources. So with larger investments, you have resources that you can hire better team and better consultants that are really good in the space that can get you better results, that allows you to grow faster with less stress. And it, it makes the experience far more enjoyable. Now, let's talk about, say for example, with content websites, a $20,000 site gets hit by Google. What are you gonna do? Most people are gonna freak out and they're not gonna wanna reinvest or have the money to use an SEO to pull them out of that pickle that has happened, right? To work out why that site has been penalized or why that site has been affected by a Google algorithm update and they're going to try and reverse it themselves. Typically, if you do go away and invest in somebody, it's going to cost you a decent amount of money uh, and you know it could be anywhere from $1,000 to $10,000, for example. Now, that's, you know, say it's $10,000, that's half the price of the site that you bought and you might not justify paying that much money to make sure you get the site back on track because you don't know what exactly what those changes are going to do and how it's going to those changes are going to allow the site to behave in the landscape of the market and with Google. Now, when you got a 20 $200,000 site, what happens if your site gets hit by Google or some Google things things change? Of course, this is this is to say you've bought a really good site. First and foremost, primary, you want to buy a really great business. If you need help with that, reach out to me. It's what all I do. <laughs> uh, and I've done it so many times and I've helped so many people buy great, buy great sites. In fact, we only buy great sites. I haven't heard anybody uh, ever say they're not happy with their site that they've purchased. 
So um, back on track with that $200,000 site, say it gets uh, a Google update comes along and that site doesn't weather very well with the update and it loses some traffic. What are you going to do? If you need to put 10 grand into an SEO to help you reverse that and do some work, so what? That's two months of income for the site. No skin off your nose, which means it's less stressful owning that business because you know you have the resources to reinvest into that type of business if anything bad happens. Of course, something might not, right? If you're buying a great site, hopefully it shouldn't. But here we go. It, you know, And there's been sites out there that have been around and never been had like bad, bad uh, changes from Google updates in the content space. So it might happen, but so what? You got resources. So that's the fun thing about buying a larger acquisition compared to if you're going to dip your toes in the water, the experience that you have is going to be so much different than buying something that is a larger asset. And typically when people want to try and dip their toes in the water, this is where they have a bad experience. And if you had a bad, bad experience in this vehicle, you're going to think, Whichever way you tackle it, using this vehicle as to replace your income or as wealth building, you're going to think it's not going to work for you. When reality is, is the strategy that you took just didn't work or you didn't understand at least what was required of you by dipping your toe in the water and how much that can slow your progress down. So let's now talk about goals, right? When it comes to goals, if your goal is to say have a portfolio of a million dollars worth of businesses, right? Um, and that might make you, let's just say, with with the multiple thirty five multiple three hundred fifty thousand dollars net a year. Okay. Now, with that, that could be your dream goal, right? You know, so you got a million dollar business. I'm just going to get my calculator out there. Three hundred um, three hundred. It's going to be about three hundred forty-two thousand dollars a month a year. Sorry, three forty-two. Uh, so you know, twenty-eight grand a month. That's really damn good for a family to be able to cover bills and have a good lifestyle. Now, if that's your dream goal to get to that million-dollar price range. Let's look at how you could do that with a $5,000 site dipping your toe in the water compared to, oh, sorry, a $20,000 site compared to a $200,000 site. With a $20,000 site, it might take you, I don't know, a year to double the size or two years to double the size of the business. So you got it worth 40K. Then you might, you might sell it and you might have saved a little bit of money. So you got your 40K from the site and then you got your 10K that you saved in that time period. And so you got 50K. So you can buy a 50K acquisition and it might take you say two years to three years. Let's just say three years to, and this is if you're doing really, really well, three years to double the site. And guys, I'm not saying this, what I say here is very general and what might take somebody two years to build a site might take somebody 10 to 20 years to you know, get those same results. Uh, so I'm just talking about if you really know what you're doing and I'm just giving a hypothetical. Uh, so don't don't take, take what I'm saying definitely with a lot of grains of salt <laughs> because each, each person who operates a business will operate it differently and you should not be comparing it exactly to this is how it's going to look linearly for you. Often, business is not linear life is not linear we have things go up and down sideways and we make a mess of things because we're human beings and you know if we stay stay the path and we'll get results but these ups and downs cause people to move and, and jump out of the vehicle itself and get distracted so back to the 20 to 40k then you've got 50k site you go buy that it might take you three years to double that 50k site you got a 100k site and then you're a tenth of the way to your million dollar valuation right and that's five years so from that you've got a hundred thousand dollar site and say you get that hundred thousand dollar site in another three years up to the two hundred and fifty thousand dollar price range and in that time frame you save fifty thousand dollars as well 
Uh, and so then you got 300K and what's that? Five plus three. So you got eight years there. Uh, and then you could just go away and buy that uh, $300,000 site and you double that. That might take, you know, four years. So that's 12 years to have a valuation of, say, uh, so 300, 600K and you saved a bit of money in that time frame. Say you saved 100K, so you got 700K and you buy something for 700K after the 12, at the 12 year mark and then you double, you get that from 700K to a million after, say, two, two years, right? So you got a 14 year time frame. For example, hypothetically, if everything works out really well and you absolutely crush it in the space, 14 years to get to that million dollar valuation as a hypothetical. Now, let's take a 200K site, for example. You get a 200K site and over that, over your first two years, you double that, that's 400K, great. And in that time frame, you also save 50K. So you've got 450K, after two years, you go buy a 450K site, and then you double that 450K site over a, say three years, okay? Uh, and that 450K site is now worth 900K, in the same time you save about 100K, and then you've got a million dollar valuation after five years compared to 14 years. Massive, massive difference. Now, then we need also need to consider what would it take you to get to that point of difference of getting from having 200K, 20K cash to 200K cash, right? Maybe you do some creative financing. Maybe you do some, uh, at the start, maybe you raise a bit of funds and there's different ways you can do this. Now, I have to make, I have to state a real big caveat here as well. I can understand that not everyone can start at the same level and you should be okay with that. I personally started with $15,000. And if you want to start there, there's nothing wrong with that. There's absolutely nothing wrong with that. I'm giving examples, I'm giving hypotheticals, and I'm trying to highlight what it could look like for you starting at different levels. And I want people to understand what their experience would be if they were going to dip their toes in the water under the $10,000 price range. Okay? So just understand there is absolutely nothing wrong with starting off at the lower price range. And you need to really, really understand and work at it uh, if you do start at that price range. It will be a second job and that won't give you an insane payback. But know that you can still do this from any entry point. And I'm just, like I said, setting expectations. In our bulk community, we help a lot of people with spy sites around the 20K range and below, and they love it, right? But I frame up to them that to expect that it's gonna be a, an absolute grind. <laughs> uh, and they buy the best sites in that price range from that $20,000 range and a little bit down, and they work on them, they grow them from learning um, from the course that I have. I don't just have a buying online businesses course in the community, we have a growing online businesses course. People also reach out to me via email, ask me questions in the Facebook group, all that sort of stuff. So I help them grow their businesses too. Uh, and most people who uh, teach people to make money online, what they actually do here guys, is they promise the world and they deliver nothing, right? So what they do is they go away and say, you can make $5,000 a month in 12 months. And all you need to do is this, 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 and this, and it's easy. I'm the opposite of that. I don't care for that. I have gained a good reputation uh, and a lot of trust by just being upfront and saying, hey, if you start off at that $5,000 range, under the $10,000 price range, it's going to be a slog and you're not going to enjoy it. It's not going to be enjoyable experience. I just like to be real, be upfront. It is what it is. Uh, I'm not going to, you know, I like to mostly under promise and over deliver, uh, but I'm really being realistic with the starting points here. So for me, what would I do, right? Some people would say, Jared, all right, cool. It's easy for you to say. Is it though? Is it easy for me to say? I'm going to say F no. 
It's not because I started off at $15,000, right? I was a plumber. I hated my life. So I built this life. I created it. And was it hard? Shit, yeah. I was just in the surf before, uh, surfing with a friend of mine. We're talking about M&A, right? And I'm working on one to $5 million deals as a, as a strategic cons- consultant for M&A deals. And he works for a firm that just got sold for $250 million. And uh, he's basically a fractional CFO, uh, you know, chief financial officer, head of finance is basically in that firm. And uh, he was like, wow, dude, like you have a really good life, right? Like I work 20 hours a week. I was out in the surf for three hours just now. And uh, I told him about my business and he's like, oh, what are you up to? What are you, you know, what are you doing for the rest of the year? And I told him, I'm going, I'm going away, mate, for two and a half months. I'm going to go surf Indonesia. Then I'm going to come back. I'm going to go snowboard New Zealand and um, just take a two and a half month break from a lot of the stuff. I'll still be here working, doing some things here and there. Uh, and he's like, wow, dude, that's sick. You've really got the life. I'm like, yeah, but I was a plumber. And I started with like 15 grand. I started very, very small. And so people would say now and ask me, if I were to lose all my money and all my businesses and I had to start again, what would I do? Let me tell you. Here's what I would do. I would go away and I'd save $50,000 from working my butt off, right? I'd go away and probably get a phone sales job. Uh, if I needed to go back to plumbing, I could go away and do that. If I needed to go back and live in a share house, um, I could do that. I could save a lot of money. Uh, I could maybe do a phone sales job from a cheaper country. Uh, but I would go away and work out how I could save $50,000 and I would try and, and I do get it, like I am live in a pretty damn privileged country. I'm a privileged guy um, and I'm lucky in that sense that I have access to be able to go away and save that sort of money uh, because of the job opportunities that are around where I live. Uh, so I totally understand that. Um, so I, just, yeah, I hope you guys understand that too. Uh, and the, so I try and save my 50K and then what would I do next? I'd go away and take out 50 to 100K of equity that I have in my properties. Uh, got more than that. Um, but say for example, I just had one one investment property and I held it for a couple, a good couple of years, I'd probably have 50 to 100K in equity to take out of that. And then what I would do is I'd go away and buy a $150,000 content site. And in today's, say if it was today's dollars, $150,000 divided by 35, it'd be making about $4,200 a month net profit, average monthly net profit off a 35 multiple. So, That'd probably take me, let's just say it takes me two years to save that 50K and to get that 100K equity from my property. I would then go away and buy that 150K business. I would buy a content site uh, and then I would spend the $4,000 a month on, at the start, some SEO and some content and some links and some site changes. And I do a bit of work myself, to be honest. And I double the size of that business. I would hopefully, I've got the experience, right? So I could hopefully double that in a year. Uh, If not, maybe two years, three years. Um, And for somebody that's not experienced, unless they get some of my help, they could do this. They could do a similar thing. But if they try to do it on their own, I wouldn't suggest so. But this is me and what I would be doing. (laughs) So uh, then I'd get to that 300K valuation and I'd start to work towards that, uh, that million dollar evaluation of businesses or just having one business to purchase. Uh, So if you struggle to save, then fix your leaky bucket or become uh, an employee or boss that actually deserves a raise, right? Be so damn good at your job that they can't not give you a raise, right? If if they won't give you one, ask for one, right? But be really, really good. Uh, the way I think about it is like, if you want something, be the person that deserves to have that. Real little bit of uh, personal development advice for you. <laughs> and don't buy lots of little sites like I did, right? I started with 15K and then I went a little bit bigger and then I went a little bit bigger again. And 
I just wouldn't suggest that. Instead, concentrate on one asset at a time and you can either sell it and buy a larger asset um, or hold on to it and grow it and automate it and then maybe buy another one to go alongside it. Uh, but to build wealth, we need concentration. For preservation of wealth, we need diversification. I'm going to repeat that again. And I got this from a friend of mine who sold his business by Flipper. Uh, we just went to a Flipper event recently. He got interviewed there uh, on the sale of his exit, of his business, I should say. And uh, he used to have a, uh, a wealth coach. And yeah, one thing he said to me, Jared, he said, to build wealth, we need concentration. For wealth preservation, we need diversification. And a lot of us have been led astray. Myself included, I put my hand up here. A lot of us have been led astray that when we start out, we need, if we got $5,000, we need to put $1,000 into five things. Whereas some other investors, uh, Warren Buffett says, if you're going to put your eggs in one basket, just watch the basket and make sure that you've got a moat around the basket. Make sure that basket is getting, you know, all the energy and the love and the attention it deserves so it's safe right and supported and the same with an asset the same with a business i would say if you're trying to build wealth concentrate on putting your money into one asset and growing it and putting your focus on it where energy where focus goes energy flows where focus goes energy flows so focus on the asset and the good energy will go towards it right and you should be able to de-risk it and scale it and build it. And that's what I would be doing is I would be solely focusing on that 150K business probably for a year or two whilst I'm still working so I can save some money on the side to put to my next acquisition, but I'd be heavily focusing on it uh, and making sure I'm in touch with the people that I use to, to grow it. So... There you go, guys. If you're starting out, and this is the end of the episode, I've, I've still got some more to share with you. But if you're starting out with not a lot of capital, set yourself a goal to maybe get to that $500,000 price range. Or maybe you want to get to that $1 million you know, portfolio uh, size of businesses, online businesses. Uh, and what's really, really important is having the right mindset to do this. Uh, I have a mindset series. I think it's, uh, I'll have to link to them in the show notes. It's a four part mindset series on the three C's to achievement that I have coined three C's to achievement. Uh, and it's basically how anybody achieves any level of success ever and the mindset they need to do so. And if you want to be successful in this or anything, even if it's, you know, being a, a professional footballer or being even just a public speaker or anything like that, then this mindset series is for you. Uh, and then, yeah, so if you have not much capital, maybe think about that, right? 500K to a million valuation. Give yourself time. Don't put, don't say you want to try and do that in, you know, five months or six months. Uh, because typically what happens when you give yourself a short time frame, you don't achieve it, then you extend it out and then you you do the opposite of building confidence, yourself, confidence for yourself. You start to lack confidence for yourself because you never achieve your goals because you set them too tightly and too strictly in too short of a time frame. And when you keep changing the goalposts, you lose confidence in yourself and that's a deep seated energy that's really hard to change and can really affect you. So if you have, say, 100K cash already, then set a larger goal to get to a $5 million property uh, online business portfolio or a $10 million uh, asset valuation. Um, and maybe you start around you know, that 200K range. If you've got 100K cash, don't be afraid, in my opinion, to, if, and you've got other assets, to take something from those other assets and put it into the deal. Of course, you have to do what's right for you. And this is absolutely not financial advice. Uh, it's what I would do. Uh, and you can get to your goals faster by doing so. And the reason I think it, I would be doing that with my properties, and say, for example, I only had one. Uh, I'm talking about 
physical properties like property investing. Say if I only had one, the reason I would take cash out in terms of equity, what they call it in the States, is a HELOC, Home Equity Line of Credit. Take some of that out. I'd be doing that because the interest rates are going to be far lower than if I was to try and get finance anywhere else in from like a an SBA loan or somewhere else where the terms could be, you know, 10 to 15% interest. Uh, you know, interest at the moment in Australia around 7%. That's half the price. Um, I'd be doing that for sure, right? Uh, so guys, I if you want help with buying businesses between the at any range up to five mil, um, let me know. I've got a full membership coaching for people wanting to buy businesses up to the 500K range. And then I do consulting for those one to $5 million deals. Uh, so just reach out to me. Um, yeah, do I do coaching and then strategic acquisition co consulting from the one to five mil and above. Um, yeah, so reach out. My email is jared at buyingonlinebusinesses.com. Also, please do me a massive favor and give me feedback to let me know if you liked this episode. You, what you can do, the feedback, you can do it wherever the podcast is. You can re leave a review on Apple Podcast, ideally, um, or you comment on YouTube, YouTube, or reach out to me via email, jared at buyingonlinebusinesses.com and, and give me some personal feedback, letting me know you like this. Because if you do, then I can go on these rants again and get things off my chest. And I have no doubt it's been insanely valuable for you. I really do. So yeah, please, please let me know. Confirm that. Um, otherwise, I probably just won't do these ones and I'll, I'll keep getting guests on and stuff. So please, 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 feedback, feedback, feedback. Even if it's constructive and you think my voice sucks, let me know. <laughs> or if there's things that I could do better, let me know. I'm here to help and serve. Speak to you guys soon.